Hey everybody, how's it going? Marcos Vegas for Fight Up TV here in Las Vegas, being joined with Oscar De La Hoya. A lot of stuff happening in the world of boxing, Oscar. First off, uh, it was announced a few days ago, Canelo versus Jaime Munguia. It, it got a lot of people excited because this is uh, the first time Canelo's facing a Mexican since Chavez Jr., a fight that uh, you promoted uh, back here in Las Vegas. Tell me you know, a little bit of the backstory about how the fight uh, happened and how you guys uh, made it official with uh, Canelo and uh, PBC and Amazon. Sure, sure. Well, look, a lot, a lot was going on with PBC, with Amazon, whether Canelo's going to go back to the zone, da, da da We just literally all came together as a happy family and made this happen. Um, look, obviously, Canelo wasn't going to fight Charlo. That would have been a disaster. Um, Canelo wasn't going to fight Benavides for some strange reason. I don't know. But, uh, you know, it's our plan worked. Our plan worked, and we... Uh, we uh, used some of that psychology, and uh, and uh, Jaime Munguia got the Canelo fight. So we're all happy. We're excited. I think this is yeah. This is the this is the first time that two Mexicans at this level, you know, the the Chavez Jr. thing was. I mean, we didn't know it was going to turn out like that. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, you know? Chavez Jr. has always been up and down, up and down, up and down. Yeah. So and we know Jaime is it. Jaime is an Jaime is an undefeated, serious fighter who uh, who wants to become great, who wants to become a, a, a world champion again. Who Jaime Munguia's career was built on this moment, and uh, I think he's going to seize it. I really do. I mean, look, I love history of boxing and this and that. And you take a look at like Cotto when he fought Canelo. I think they were like the same age, where Cotto was. Uh, the older guy and Canelo was, you know, the passing of the torch, you know. So this is almost similar, I mean, with Canelo and, and Munguia, you know. So we'll see. I mean, Canelo's, Canelo's a great fighter. I, there's no doubt about that. Um, I, just feel that I just feel that our fighter uh, will be better that night. Was there any sort of apprehension on, on Canelo's end, given the, the relationship you guys had in the past and, and the split to come together and make this fight happen? Or was that sort of like a, a situation that's water under the bridge? Like, hey, this fight's going to make a lot of money. Let's all work together. No, no, no. There's, 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 there was obviously a lot of animosity. So you can imagine the negotiations. You know, um, you know, I have my front people who are dealing with the other side because obviously I can't speak to them directly. Uh, I think I'm a threat or something. I don't know. Um, but you say them, like to Canelo or to the PBC people? Or? Yeah, PBC and all yeah. that. So... So, you know, I have my people, you know, I, I have the orders and I give the, you know, and get this done, right? Uh, along with Fernando Beltran, who's my partner uh, with Munguia. But we made it happen, you know, uh, we made it happen. And that's, that's all that matters and counts. And, uh, you know, I think Amazon, uh, The Zone, uh, you know, PBC and Canelo Promotions and, you know, Munguia, Golden Boy, we all made it happen. And that's what I keep preaching is that let's all work together to make these big fights happen. Well, is there any weird things in there where like you can't show up or like will you be allowed on the press conference? Oh, like how's there, there, there was? was? All, all kinds of shit. Yeah. But uh no, we we cleared everything up. Yeah. We cleared everything up. Um yeah, they didn't know oh, Oscar can't be part of it. Fuck you guys. You know, like yeah. what are you talking about? Like this is my company. This yeah. is it's Golden Boy. It's like how can I not be there? So a little push, little tug, you know, it's we got it all done. And, you know, I promised myself I will not let my ego get in the way, but I want to be here for this one. Yeah. So I had to I had to push back. You know, I know a lot of uh, trainers or a lot of observers were hoping, like, hey, Jaime gets one more camp with Freddie to really refine or, or two more fights. I, I, I guess, you know, he can't pass up this opportunity. It's Canelo. Like, who's going to say no? But how do you see Jaime at this point taking this fight at this moment? I really do think... It's the perfect, perfect opportunity. It literally is. When I was watching um, uh, John Ryder and Munguia, you know, right there up close and personal, you know, you have Freddie in the corner for the first time. I saw a different Munguia from previous, you know, outings where he was on his toes more, he was using his jab more, um, he was patient. Uh, still the relentless Munguia we see and we know, but I saw something different. Which is great because now Freddie Roach, I mean, they went straight back to the gym after the fight. 
So now Freddie Roach can work on his, on his, you know, defense, on his combinations, on his jab, um, and that's going to be key, obviously. But yeah, look, we we couldn't wait any longer. You know, there's fans who are saying, "Well, Munguia's already he has he's almost 50 and 0 and hasn't you know, when is he going to step up? Well, this is it. Here you go. Um, you know, and there's a lot of fans. Well, he's not ready. Look, we know when he's ready. We know when he's not. We, that's our job. He is ready. He is positioned right now. This is his moment. This can be the changing of the guard on Cinco de Mayo. He throws a, a lot of punches and bunches, does Jaime. He, he's aggressive uh, with Freddie. He looked more tight, more compact, more uh, defensively responsible. What's the key there for him to beat Canelo a after six rounds? It's all about footwork. Yeah. It's all about footwork because, look, you have you have a guy who's, what, 33, 34? Yeah. And then you have a young guy who's 25, 26, or whatever he is. Yeah. So obviously he's younger. He's, his legs are fresher. Um, he can take the punch better, uh, uh, you know, although Canelo does have a good chin. But when you have all that wear and tear under your belt, you know, you, the, the armor tends to kink a little, you know, bend a little um, at that stage. So I have to go with my guy, with Munguia. I mean, if they go to a war, if they go at it for 12 rounds, I'm going to have to go with a younger guy, you know, because I think Freddie Roach has gotten Munguia in a position where he can box. He can, if he wants to, he can stay outside and use his jab and combinations um, you look at Canelo's footwork, you know, obviously I've said it all along, he moves like he's on quicksand. That, so if you study his footwork, you can easily win that fight, you know, because every time Canelo steps forward, you know he's going to throw something. That's no secret. So you have to offset him. There's a lot of little things that I've seen from the outside in that obviously I'm going to go into Munguia's camp and, and help him out and give him some advice. I'm not the trainer, obviously, but that's up to Freddie Roach. He's the expert. But, um, yeah, there's a lot of things that are going our way, uh, Munguia's way, that, uh, that can give him the chance uh, in winning this fight. Now, I've seen you at press conferences recently, you know, uh, throwing water on the bridge, like, hey, let's not fight anymore, let's, let's hug it out. Do you think it's all possible at some point from now till uh, the fight week for the Canelo-Munguia fight that you and Canelo will have a face-to-face -face and talk and work it all out? I mean, I don't know about working it all out, but, well, like, go up to him and shake his hand, you know, just the way I did with Sanisa. And, yeah, I can do that. I don't – I have no ego. I'm telling you, it's it's all good for the sake of the sport. But, you know, if there's people who take it one step further and it's like they take it so personal, um, look, I'm just here to promote the biggest fights, and that's exactly what we're doing. We're positioning ourselves uh, for 2024 and beyond – to uh, to give the fight fans the best fights. I got a feeling they're going to wrap me up. I see someone in the corner right over here. So uh, last thing I, I do want to touch on, I know you spoke last week about Ryan. Uh, you said that he's fine, he's okay. Uh, but just what have they told you? Because a lot of fans are like, I don't know, Oscar. He doesn't seem okay. Like he seems a little out there the way he's trying to, to sell and promote the fight. Look, that's his that's his style. That's his way. Um, I, don't, I don't really, I don't talk to him every single day, but... From what I've seen, when he's in the gym, he's looking sharp. Um, he's looking ready. He's looking fit. And look, I'll never, I'll never forget that time when he told me, "Look, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do the biggest troll in the world." I don't really know what that means, but I, I mean, I guess he did it. I guess he's doing it. Um, look, all I do is promote the fight, and. Uh, and make sure that uh, April 20th uh, is, is successful for everybody. But I can assure you one thing, that Ryan Garcia will be ready. Even more so than his other fights, he will be ready. There's no rehydration clause. you got to think about that. No rehydration clause. Imagine that. Um, yeah, he'll be, he'll be uh, in tip-top shape. I just got to follow up with this. You said he told you he was a troll. So this, this whole thing is just him trying to get as much attention for the fight then that's what he i i, I really don't i he, you said he said uh, it's a troll it's a troll yeah, i mean he said look yeah i'm trolling whatever and i was like okay i'll just do whatever you have to do i don't know i, I don't know what you're doing yeah. um and uh but i did tell him one thing just be ready just go out there and be ready you have all the talents in the world you have you have what it takes to become great go out there 
on April 20th and take care of business. And he goes, I'm going to knock him out. All right. When he told me, I believed it. So I'm going to expect it. All right. Hey, Oscar, good chatting with you, man. Appreciate it. Thank you so much here with Oscar De La Hoya, Marcos Villegas in Las Vegas.